Princess Tomato in Salad King. Wait a minute. It's Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. That's a nice way to start out your game. Screwing up the title screen. Good job, Hudson. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. I can't believe they're re-releasing this game. Now, it is true that at one time I called this the best game in the NES library. It's time to review Super Mario Bros. 3. Many people consider it the second best game in the NES library. The first one, of course, being Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. If you couldn't tell though, I was being sarcastic. I only knew of this game because of the way it frustrated me as a kid. Back in the day of the NES, Nintendo had a phone number you could call to get help on a game. I'm not talking about that 900 number that they eventually turned it into, but a real long distance number you could call to get help on any NES title. I can't tell you the number of times I had to call it over this game alone, because back then the internet really didn't exist the way it does today. The main reason this game is such a problem is that the objectives aren't very clear. You tend to just keep trying to use different objects in different ways, logical or not. Sometimes it would only let you advance when you move to a certain spot, then return to the previous location, for reasons only the programmers knew. Now if you can't tell, this is a graphical text adventure game. You don't interact with the screen, but with the commands on the left and the right of the screen. So if you're looking for a point and click adventure game, like Shadowgate or Deja Vu, keep looking. Speaking of which, hint, hint. The whole plot behind this game is that you play as a cucumber, whose job it is to rescue Princess Tomato, who's been kidnapped by an evil pumpkin. The land is populated by walking and talking fruits and vegetables, and you will meet a variety of characters to interact with in your quest. From Mr. Garlic to Mrs. Plum to Lisa, Princess Tomato's sister. My goodness, she must get picked on a lot, being the only human in a world of walking and talking fruits and vegetables. But no offense to Princess Tomato, I think your sister's way hotter. The gameplay itself is all done through the main screen. As you can see, there are 14 commands to choose from. This is the main problem of the entire game. There are too many options to choose from. Some of them are just redundant. For example, check and look. They're basically the same thing. The only difference is that look is more of an overview of the scene, while check is used for looking at a specific object or person. There isn't any reason that they couldn't have just combined them into one button. There are also buttons that are rarely used, like the hit or praise. It makes the game unnecessarily harder because whenever you go into a screen, Screen, you have to try those keys. There are nine levels in this title, and with the exception of the last one, what you need to do is often a mystery. You'll have a basic idea of the overall plot, but the way you even get started solving the objectives of the level are never clearly spelled out. It's more of a game of clicking on everything and hoping everything works out. There are also mazes that you'll have to travel through. I remember when I first played this game back in the 90s, having to create my own maps so I wouldn't get lost. What a pain in the butt that was. I will never understand the need of putting mazes in adventure games. And even so, why are there even mazes in these places in the first place? And to make things worse, there's actually three of them in this game. They give you a password you can write down at the end of each level. The passwords weren't that long, so that was appreciated. Occasionally, you'll come up against a bad guy in your adventure, and you'll need to fight him. How do you do that? Why, with a rousing game of paper, rock, scissors. However, it's not that simple. After you win the game, you then have to decide which way he's going to look, and if you get that right, you'll win the round. If you don't choose the right direction, your win won't count. The same will go for you if you happen to lose that round. Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom is okay. It does have a decent story with somewhat interesting characters, but the question is, is the game worth 500 Wii points? I think it all depends on how much you like graphical text adventure games. This genre has been dead for years for a reason. It's a bit boring to play, when you're used to the fun of just pointing and clicking. But if you're asking, did I enjoy the game? Sure I did. But that's only because it brought back all the memories of when I played it as a kid. If this was my first time playing this title, I wouldn't have had as much fun. So I go back to the question, is the game worth 500 Wii points? Hmm, uh, not really. This title should have stayed in the past, and I'm kind of shocked that Hudson even re-released it. If you're in the mood for this type of game, go for it, as you won't be disappointed because it is a solid title for a graphical text adventure game. But everyone else, you should probably skip it.